In Kotlin, we can use a variance modifier, like in or out, on a type parameter of a generic class. But when we do this, it limits where throughout that class we can use the type parameter. So what do we do in those cases where we need the type parameter to appear in both an in position and an out position? Today, we're gonna see how type projections can solve that problem. But before we get into it, huge shout out to all 2,200 amazing Kotlin developers who have subscribed to this channel. Thank you so much. It is a joy and an honor to be on this adventure with you. Okay, first things first. In order to understand why type projections work, you first have to understand variance. And if you don't know what that is, or if you're feeling a little rusty about it, take nine minutes to watch my previous video. It's easy to watch, and it'll give you a solid foundation for the concepts in this video. Now, the models that we're working with today are similar to last time. We've got a vending machine class with a purchase function. And when you call that function, you can pass it some money and you'll receive some kind of a snack. Now, snack is a subtype of product and candy bar is a subtype of snack. And last time we had some other kinds of snacks too, like trail mix and gummy bears. But for today, we're just gonna keep things simple with just one subtype of snack, which is candy bar. All right, let's review the problem. For some generic types, the type parameter only ever publicly appears as a return type. And when this is the case, we can just add the out modifier to the type parameter and the subtyping is going to work like we want it to. For other generic types, though, we just can't do that. So, for example, if our vending machine here needs a refund function, then the type parameter is going to show up both as a return type and as a parameter type. And that means we're not going to be able to use the out modifier anymore. And without this out modifier, this vending machine candy bar won't be a subtype of vending machine snack, and we get this compiler error. Now, thankfully, Kotlin gives us another option here. Uh, we can use a type projection, and we'll talk about what this is in detail in a moment. But to use a type projection, we just put the variance modifier on a type argument instead of a type parameter. So in this code, we can put it right here. And now this snack machine variable has a type that is a projection of vending machine snack. Uh, so what in the world does that mean? Okay, think of it this way. When you shine a light on a beach ball, you see a shadow of that beach ball on the wall. And the ball itself is a three-dimensional sphere, but the shadow on the wall is a projection. It's just a flat two-dimensional circle. It looks kind of similar to the ball, but it's kind of lost some of its depth. A type projection is kind of a similar idea. So vending machine out snack is a type projection. And since we're using the out keyword on the type argument, this kind is specifically known as an out projection. Now this out projection looks similar to vending machine snack, but every function where the type parameter appeared in the in position is going to be changed so that it's more restricted. So it's kind of like it's lost some of its depth. So for example, if we try to call the refund function, we'll notice that the parameter type here is no longer snack. It's a type called nothing. Now what's nothing? Nothing is a special type in Kotlin, and it is the subtype of every other type that you'll ever encounter. And there's no way to create an instance of it. So by changing this function's parameter type from snack to nothing, it effectively means that we're not going to be able to call it. But keep in mind that this only applies to this reference of the vending machine. If you use the same object with the vending machine candy bar type, then you can get your refund just fine. Now, why does Kotlin do this? Well, by forcing the parameter types to nothing, which is a subtype of every type in Kotlin, it's safe for vending machine candy bar to be a subtype of vending machine out snack because no matter what the type argument is, nothing is guaranteed to be a subtype of it, and so we've got contravariance for sure. Now, as you probably guessed, we can do the same thing with the in modifier. So to test this out, let's flip these things around so that we can try to make vending machine snack a subtype of vending machine candy bar. We can use the in keyword on this type argument to create what we call an in projection. An in projection looks like the original type, but Kotlin's going to find every function whose return type is that type parameter, and it's going to change it to a nullable any. So we can call this function, but it'll return its result as a nullable any instead of as a candy bar. 
Now, by forcing all of its return types to a nullable any, which is a supertype of every type in Kotlin, it's safe for vending machine snack to be a subtype of vending machine in candy bar, because no matter what the type argument is, any, a, a nullable any is definitely guaranteed to be a supertype of it. So we've got covariance and it's safe for that subtyping to happen. Finally, what do we do for those cases where we want to use a function that just has no type parameter at all? Well, here I've got a function called perform maintenance. And as you can see, there's no type parameter involved in this function. It's not used uh, in the in position and it's not used in the out position. In cases like this, we can use a special kind of projection called a star projection. A star projection looks a lot like the original type, but every occurrence of the type parameter in an in position will be replaced with nothing. And every occurrence of the type parameter in an out position will be replaced with the type parameters upper bound. To do this, we just replace the entire type argument with a star character like this. And now we can assign literally any kind of vending machine to this variable. Now, if you're like Mr. Grumpy or Calcitrant Man, you might be saying, Dave, why I got to project them stars when I can project the out instead? Well, you're right. Instead of a star projection here, you could just use an out projection with the upper bound. But using a star projection does convey your intent that the type argument is largely irrelevant here. Also, star projections are more resilient if you were to change that upper bound type later at some point. So for example, if this upper bound were to change to snack, we would get a compiler error. But if we were using a star projection here instead, then it could change without breaking anything. One last thing to keep in mind about type projections is that they can work even with generics from libraries. So for example, in Kotlin, an array is mutable because you can both get and set any of its elements. And so that means its type parameter appears in both the in and out positions. But if you wanted array of candy bar to be a subtype of array of snack, you can still use the same trick. Just create a type projection like this and you're on your way. So there you go. Type projections can be a great way to get the subtypes that you want, even when you can't add the in or out variance modifiers to the generic itself. Now, the concepts of variance and type projections are going to be covered in even more detail in Chapter 19 of Kotlin, an Illustrated Guide. And this chapter is going to be published online in April. But if you're a LeanPub reader, you've already got access to a draft copy of this chapter right now. And by the way, if you want to be among the first to know about any new articles or videos or projects that I've got up my sleeve, uh, you should subscribe to my brand new email newsletter. And you can do that by going to newsletter.typealias.com. In the meantime, keep writing that Kotlin code and feel free to reach out in the comments or on social media with any thoughts, ideas, or questions that you've got. See you next time. You've read the chapters online. Now, I'm proud to present the Lean Puff edition of Kotlin, an illustrated guide. Take the book offline with you, mark it up in your favorite PDF software, and get early access to new chapters as they're written. You can pick up your copy today. Just go to book.typealias.com.